Don't sit in the back. I have to Old walk. dude coming in. <laughs> Thank you. So, what's the cleverest thing you ever did? Uh, so, sorry? What's the cleverest thing we ever did? Yes. Well, Nigel just followed me. Nigel, please answer. I agreed to be on a panel with these four idiots. <laughs> Three idiots and one invited guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I guess he wanted a serious answer from you guys. Basically the same way you would uh, uh, circumcise. You would. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, if you want to get these off with the same technique, that would be very easy. Yeah. So so what I do is I, I give the guy handcuffs. I actually cut him to the table. I give him a shim, and I go to my friend and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be right back, and uh, I'm going to be right back. Can you take care of the table? It's called a captive audience. <laughs> two tensions. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, two tensions on one side. Two tensions on two tensions on one side. Three teeth on both. Six teeth. Yeah. Yeah. At least you can get one side out. Very key. Nice to have some story about it. Can you do that? At the Oxford exhibition, Scott was having a shimmy. He put the handcuffs on so tight he couldn't get the shims in. And basically keep their minutes to Please hold the mic. Of course we don't have keys. Police issue, UK police issue, handcuffs. And he cannot get them off. We're like, do you want a hand? And the rate was going, he would immediately use the hands. Bug Blue is a tennis player from Sweden. And he's a very good player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just live shimming. Uh, you know. I've never done it before, and he's quite rubbish at most things that he does. So, um, he's going to be running that through most of the, uh, the demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> you need to shout out if you like. Uh, Yours, can I have your tools? They are much better at this. What? Oh. 
Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, that's right. So, um, this year at EMF, I organised last year's EMF Lockdown Village, and this year I organised the same thing. So, we uh, went to the extent we got a tent, we paid for a tent, we organised tables, we organised chairs, pickers. we organised pickers, we have support staff, we have uh, banners, we have tools to sell, we have tools to use, we have lots to use. What I didn't remember to do was ask the little hostess to bring the locks to the event. So, for the first three hours, the locks at the village have no locks. It's a small oversight, but it's a fairly major one. So within the last three days, we've had to work with it. So come on, there must be more Yeah, yeah, there must be more questions. Please. Very quick, we also got white last time. We also got white last time. It gets dark, you this is going to be getting on for hours. Don't, 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 don't. Do not look at the man behind the grid. Pay him no attention. Okay, so that's that one. Who's got the next question? This is this may well be more of a roasting. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to get through uh, those uh, dimple locks? The ones the keys that have like like partially drilled in holes either side. Uh, the best way to get Would you like the microphone before you answer? There are um, a number of techniques that you will be familiar with. Um, the most common, the easiest to do, and the most successful would be with the key. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah, start off with the key, and then um, the next one will be to pick them. The, once you can pick a lock, the principle remains the same for everyone, which is if it moves, leave it alone. If it doesn't move, pick it. Move up, pick um, Dimple locks, I personally find easy to pick the standard locks based on the fact that generally speaking the keyway is massive so you can get a reasonably large pick in there and because the keyway is sideways the pins are generally shorter and so your range of movement is smaller and the tolerance is quite good and um, generally have school pins. All those things combine to make quite a lot of dimple locks with very easy predictable pick would you not have. Multi-lock garrison the most popular. Um, a known lock I can pick in maybe 10, 20 seconds. Um, an unknown lock for the longest for about five, six minutes for a lock I can see the ball. Nigel's a bit similar speed, I believe. Um, yeah, they don't pose massive amounts of problems, to be honest. However, the keys look interesting. It did pull off, so really coming under attack at the moment because a lot of manufacturers won't have half of them go to dimples because they're complicated, really. And they're exactly the same, but you can paint the keyway because okay. people haven't done that before. So they've gone from being that way to that way, and you can paint them that. Um, they put magnets in the stuff. Um, but there's a French locksmith who's bringing out a tool that basically opens all of them very quickly. So I think they say the big class of high security is going to be disappearing pretty damn quick. Okay, so next question. So if all locks uh, are pickable quickly, by the sounds of it, should we just get rid of all the locks and just go for bolts? Or is that equally uh, <laughs> vulnerable? How do you when you're outside? Mike, Mike. Mike. Really, Mike? <laughs> Would you go out? Recording. No, no, I'm a home bird. <laughs> you're a home bird. Um, I think no. the most difficult lock to pick would be a couple of slide bolts from the inside with no letterbox. I don't know how to do that. Maybe drill a hole through the door and poke at it with wires. Well, you, of course you know. Oh, <laughs> Essentially, no one's really going to pick locks to open them, uh, as in to break in. We pick locks for sport. Um, there are some cases of people picking locks to get in. It's worth having a decent lock, as in something that's bump proof or at least bump resistant. It's it's as simple as that, really. No one's going to really pick the lock to get in, unless you're a targeted person, at which point there's no point worrying about it. There is a problem with Warren Warren. Give me a call, that's what I ask you. Um. <laughs> His name is Warren Rockley, he's available 074. <laughs> <laughs> Just scan the QR code for you. Um, what was the question? Exactly. Um, Mr. Door, DJ. you can get past them. Um, one of my favourite tricks on warrants is to open the door which is bolted, then leave it bolted again when I leave through that same door, which really must screw with the head of the people that I've done it to. But that's is this a door that was Sometimes. <laughs> he doesn't believe a word I say. I'm that, I'm that good. Yeah. 
Ele se enxergou como Nazi. I'm assuming some of you can't differentiate between bullshit and right. real. Still talking. Part of that was bullshit. Uh, next question. Next question. Right. Pretend DJ in front. Hello, pretend DJ. You don't have to mind. Stop mind. You're not on the radio now. Come on. So I was wondering when you said people that lockpick don't lockpick to get indoors and stuff. It's not really true. But I mean. How would you burglars get him in? Surely there's some burglars that do that. This, this is a mic and you should be hearing me right now. Tiny mic. Basically that's the question. Or, or why, why don't they use lockpicks? I have a microphone. Okay, so why would a burglar not use lockpicks? Because uh, an average lock on a front door, if it's not stupid cheap, uh, will take some skill uh, uh, to, to actually open it. So you need to put in the time to learn that skill. And then it's probably, well, these guys, that's all they do, so they practice a lot. And f allegedly, yep. And uh, if you are a complete novice and you want to learn enough lock picking to, uh, well, kind of consistently open those locks, uh, that takes a long time. And the key word is consistent. Because um, if these guys go on a job, they get paid by the hour, I reckon, or by the job. It, it depends. It, well, I mean, if you show up at a door and it takes five minutes or two minutes, that doesn't really matter. And, and every now and then it takes, 45 minutes, I reckon. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you're trying to rob a place, being on your knees in front of a door, you're not supposed to be yet for 45 minutes, that's going to be a problem. There are the band five times for extra tools. Yeah. And of course, there are other ways to get around it. I mean, uh, a good locksmith will try to open your door without any damage, not even to the lock. If you take a big old drill out, and or just make a big hole or go through a window, that'll work. Because these guys won't do that because that's extra cost for the client. But a burglar, well, see if he cares. I mean, he's gonna rob you anyhow, uh, so that's an extra door for you. So this is, uh, for a burglar, this is probably the, the least efficient way to get in. Does that answer your question? Let's be honest, yeah. How many times have you heard a weird noise or a bang or a crash or a lot? Okay, let's have a show of hands. How many people have heard alarms going off at night? How many people have bothered to investigate? <laughs> exactly. There's no point trying to walk for a burglar trying to pick their way in. If they boot the door in and don't worry about the alarm, no one's coming in. No one's picking their way into a house. It's not the quick way in, it's not the efficient way in. No, no normal burglar would. Yep. And that includes bumping. Basically, for, for now, that answer is probably a yes. Yeah. 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 I've seen breaks into houses quite a lot with warrants. Um, I do pick the locks. When they're going very quickly, they can be very quickly. You are sort of sat there, even though I've got the force of work behind me and totally too guarded as well, just to make sure that no one's breaking around the back of the head. It can get really scary. And that's for a day. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> one of the closest things you'll ever do um, to being a burglar as a locksmith is mental health warrants, slightly different from utility warrants, in that um, you have an appointment, usually noon, why noon, I don't know, um, with the police, and you turn up and open the door of a someone who has mental health issues with uh, mental health nurses and so on. You've got to open it quickly, quietly, otherwise the police just smash it in. Um, quickly, quietly, and as efficiently as possible. It's the closest you'll ever get to being a burglar, and it is terrifying. I've done a few, I hate them. You need to be in in a couple of minutes. And so they don't mind, you shouldn't really damage anything, but the stress and the adrenaline is unbelievable. It's terrifying. Now, 
I've got some burly coppers behind me and a nurse. Um, if I was trying to break in for nefarious purposes, I personally don't think I could do it. But to knit back to your bumping question, let's imagine all of us, we're asleep. It's night time, and all of a sudden, you hear this. You'll notice. Yeah, bumping, not if you're in, in particular. There are faster ways in. Yeah, there are faster ways. Um, also, it takes a lot of skill. I mean, there have been locks in the lock picking tent, easy locks. Nigel's picked it up, been there a few minutes, got fed up. John, me, um, I'm not mentioning any tricycle locks on dated Ludo Dudos. Sometimes they're a pain in the arse. Now, if you're a burglar, you, there are more consistent ways in. And generally, through the open window that you've left, or the back door that's been broken for six months, or any other speedy method. Well, to get back to that uh, bump key question, normally I would say burglars won't use that because you need a shitload and they break and that's hard. But if you live in a, a new build it uh, uh, or in a flat with uh, all the same locks because you are not allowed to change it because all, uh, all the tenants have to have a key that also fits on the front door, you all have the same brand and type of lock. A bomb key would work for the whole building. So in situations like that, or in a completely, uh, uh, if there's a, what is it, new build? New build, yeah. uh, If there's a new build, a, a ton of buildings, well, if that's the same contractor who put the locks in, they're probably the same. So then, if you move into a building, first thing you do, change the locks. I don't, I, don't, I don't care how good the locks were that were on there, just swap them. Because you don't know how many people have the locks or actually the keys for their door. So that's good security. But normally bumping shouldn't be a problem. And well, that's it. But that's been said, there is some new research that I was kind of involved in that we're making bump keys from just the pictures of your keyhole. Yeah, something like that, yeah. It's quite new. You can visit it. Kinda, yeah. <laughs> and it looks, well, it, it looking, looks promising. Actually, it works. And uh, we, we just made an app that will, uh, well, that, that will enable you to do so. Yeah, it's the bigger we, hi, Buck. <laughs> and uh, we collaborated with, with some guys in, uh, in, in Germany, uh, Christoph, uh, 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 Decoder is his, uh, his, his name he goes by online. And we just took pictures of keyholes and uh, basically figured out the rest of the info you need to actually make that bump key. And we had those printed uh, first by Shapeways because they do different materials that are, wor that are working quite well. And, th sorry? I'm not doing anything. We don't want you to speak, that's fine. Yeah, they, 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 they work with nylon, they, they print with nylon, and we can't pr print nylon ourselves yet because it, uh, it's, it has to be too hot. We're working with other materials as well, because it, it's an ongoing process, but we've just been doing it for a couple of weeks. And, but it's cool. And uh, we will not be releasing that app, uh, but we, no, we're not. <laughs> nope. That's correct, not at all. Commercial security hasn't really moved on much at all, ever. Um, however, car security has moved on a bunch. Cars are extremely difficult to steal. What aren't extremely difficult to steal is car keys. And so, as you go home tonight, have a look on your drive. If your car is worth really stealing, your house is likely to be broken into. In particular, if you have a nice car, something that um, is likely to be sold to order, so um, last security approach I did, which would be owner of an M3 CSI. Very nice car, very rare, or many in the UK. If I want one as a criminal, I'll pay someone else to steal it. His house was poorly. So if you have a very nice car, odds are someone will break into your house to get the car keys. You're going up for a nice car, spend the extra, have a security professional, not a joiner, have an actual proper security professional come around 
and make sure that when you're asleep at 3 in the morning, you don't wake up to an angry man with something sharp pointed at your face asking where your car keys are. Just as a, a small aside for security, I'm sure we'd have more questions. Don't leave your car keys on the table just to make all the way. Yes, well, if your security's right. crap, leave the car keys on the table. Don't leave on the bedside table because you will meet a man who wants to know where those keys are. Yeah, if they get the keys before they get to you, that's a much better so, sometimes that's a good option. I think we've basically covered that question. Yeah, we've got another uh, question coming up. What? What's the oddest thing you've made lockpicking tools out of? Playing cards. Playing cards? That's one of the things back in the year, two years ago. Um, one of the lads, that's a seven years old, said, uh, is it true you can do lockpicks? Can you pick them up from the table? So that's one of the girls who sat around the table, and she got one. Made a lock for him, picked a lock he was holding. Two picks and attention it out of a, a bra on the way. <laughs> <laughs> They're quite wide, are they? Um, I get laid fairly regularly. We've been able to pick locks. Some people are very light sleepers. <laughs> I, I, I got there uh, when I was on stage at some tinier venue. I could have been drunk. I'm not quite sure about that. Uh, um, somebody asked me, is it true that you can pick uh, handcuffs with uh, a paperclip? And I happen to have a paperclip of a size that should be doable. And, well, of course I had handcuffs. It's a <laughs> demo. So I just clicked them on. I was like, that's probably not a good idea to do that on stage. So that was kind of stupid. But it worked out, yeah. <laughs> and also, the, uh, the nope. thing I've seen, um, a guy I'm fairly well at only online, um, Digital Blue, picked a lock with the stem of a banana and then bumped it because the same banana was frozen. So that's, <laughs> yeah. that's probably the weirdest. Yeah, yeah that was uh, at, at one on one, was that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was basically a challenge what, who, who can have the stupidest lock pick ever. And he said, I'll open the lock with a banana. <laughs> and he did. Um, uh, you mentioned that vehicle locks are m much better than house locks. I mean, what's the future and what can we apply from vehicle locks to house locks? Um, the reason vehicle locks are better was uh, due to certain areas in the UK, Manchester, Liverpool specifically, where people drove cars that they didn't own, which takes us back to the tool rules, don't pick locks that you don't own without explicit permission to pick. Um, and insurance companies spent lots of money on transponder technology. Modern um, car key technology is now prox keys, or proxim proximity keys, where if you have a key on your person, the car will start. Um, it locks when you walk away and unlocks when you walk to it. The problem is, how do you know your car's ever locked? Because you don't. Every time you come to it, it's unlocked. You've never seen your car locked. Unless you leave your key far away and walk back to the car, by the way, it's a security risk to do that. <laughs> With regard to um, domestic locks, personally, Nigel will no doubt have a different view, but I personally think domestic locks aren't going to move on much, if any. They haven't moved on in the last 100 years, they're not going to move on in the next, because they work perfectly well. There's no need for complicated electronics. I make a really good living on the fact that car locks are always natural, and you know, people lose keys. If you, what car do you drive? <coughs> what year? 2003, lock, four gold. Spare keys for that. Lost keys, 250 quid. Spare keys, about 160. Um, your front door lock, I would say, no more than 10. For a spare key, 100 quid max for lost keys. If every time you lost your keys, I was 250 pound from you, you wouldn't take the technology. I can't let people buy a base for lock. 250 quid is never going to happen. Based on that, same lock, you always have. For these Brox cards, I, uh, I I met a girl once, and she um, she she lived in a, a an apartment, but that was on the ground floor, and her parking spot was right before in front of her door. She left her keys in her coat pocket, and her coat was at the coat hanger, which was right beside the door. Her car was never locked. She didn't know that. Nobody can steal it. Yeah, but well, you can get in it. You start the car lock, and then it locks again. And you, you stand there trapped, because they're deadlocked. Yeah. You're trapped in until someone rescues you. 
the, the other reason that uh, cars can also have is because generally health can change your health compared to car. And a lot of problems with the car. You get, you, know, you get the two G's to pay with the car, you're fine, you're happy. It sounds like you're getting paid out 300 quid to get a car and have them on the And they've got no reason to keep it. Obviously, they could. There's a, there is a problem with rentals. Some crooks found a workaround. They removed the RFID from the official key. Glued it to the reader. Glued it near the reader. Yeah. Just hand work. back with the empty key. Yeah. Uh, and that can be cloned easy. There are um, remote start applications you call on, which will avoid you calling through, where you take the transponder from a working key and you put it up the box, uh, which is hidden under the dashboard, has a, a reader coil and a small transmitter coil and amplifier so that you can remotely start your car. If you have an unfitted, fitted, make sure the man understands where to put the remote and mobile switch. Because otherwise, you'll hit the button, you car will crash through your own front wall, you don't get covered on the car insurance, and you don't get covered on the home insurance. So a small aside, not that's ever happened twice now, to people I've actually dropped for. Another thing with the proximity uh, keys of uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the range in which they work is really one key. If you park in a, in a parking garage, they might actually generally be signal in such a way that um, that maybe on the left side of your car it locks up you walk two steps and on the right side of the car it may actually like take several meters. Um, beyond that, um, for a lot of transform keys there's also what's known as sort of, sort of a relay attack. It's basically somebody will just stand next to you in the elevator and will basically uh, have the communication relayed to somebody that's standing next to your car. So whenever they try and open the car, the car will ask, are you the key I'm looking for? And that will get relayed to the guy that's standing next to you. Okay, so we've totally got five minutes left, so we're going to go with quick fire questions now, so none of this half an hour stuff. I, um, I've got kind of two quick, uh, kind of one slightly relevant question. Um, uh, it's about sort of uh, rental houses and stuff. Do you ever get problems where like people like rent a house out for like two months and just clone the key and then come back in and break in? And then the second part is about sort of uh, 3D printing and stuff. Do you reckon when you get sort of cheap 3D printing of locks, you know, it's going to be sort of, I guess, uh, you know, uh, accurate, uh, homogeneous kind of pin pin sort of size and stuff. Is that going to take away from picking? And then, you know, are you, are you going to be able to have like, you know, 3D printed locks straight from the manufacturer and then you can check it and then they can send it back? Okay, so the first part was, yeah. first part was um, rented houses and spare keys, change the locks. Exactly. I had the same conversation That's with somebody yesterday who said they weren't allowed to change the locks. Just change them exactly. and take them to the estate agent. I've got the keys, they're the new locks. Uh, the second part was 3D printed keys and... Um, no, yeah. 3D printed locks, that yeah. was. Did. Every time you moved in, you removed the locks that were technically owned by your rental in the apartment. And he, had, he bought his own locks and he just traveled with his own house locks. So every time he went to a new apartment, he just replaced all locks and he knew he was the only one with the key to that set. 
And the fun part with that is, if you're if you're moving around a lot, uh, you only have to sell. Uh, you have to buy one set of locks because you keep on using those. They always fit the standard. Yes. Yeah, they're standard. Basically, yeah. Standard size. So um, if in doubt, and this is not advice, but you know, just change it. Take it with you. When was the last time someone turned up and opened the door for a record property? Many times. Uh, as Warren just said, many times. That All the time. The other thing is, the, uh, the lease or rent agreement often says that the landlord has to have a key for inspections and things. I suspect most people would rather have a few hours notice of that. And if it just so happens that the landlady turns up, tries the key and goes, oh, it doesn't work, then phone you, you can come back open the door. This yeah, you know someone happens Swap on the ground, yeah. you can leave you can. Well, a couple more quick-fire questions while we're quick-firing. Yeah. Um, very simple thing about rentals. Your hotel room is also a rental. Yes, it is. Next question. I uh, was just wondering... Um, oh, uh, you again. <laughs> how many pins? Uh, what, what's the most amount of pins that you've seen in a lock? The most amount, uh, 21 for me. Uh, the most I'm aware of is 24. Could be. Yeah, the most. Yeah, I know there's the. Um, I forget the name of it. The, the most I've picked is 12. Okay, that's good. Next question. No, sorry. I've, I've got a 14 pin lock if everyone wants to have a look at it. You, you got shut tent. down. No, we Time can, is up. You can shout loudly. <laughs> they can turn the mics off. Yeah, let's do that. Let, can we have let's one more question. Let's get one more question. One more question. Okay, where, where? Who has a good one? Who has one last question? Really, guys? There yeah. we go. Yeah, I go. <laughs> what was the hardest pick you had to pick? Hardest lock. Hardest lock to pick. What was your hardest lock to pick? We'll go around. Go around. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I know instantly which one I wanted to tell you about, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> So okay. I'll, sk I'll skip that one if you don't mind. Um, quite a boring answer, but pretty much every lock I have to go to as a, a paid job begins out as the hardest lock I've ever had to pick. Um, Ford Fiesta with proximity key. The customer didn't know that her key fob had a key in it. The lock had never been used in five years. And that took me two and a half hours on a HG101 after school. It did open in the end, and I got paid, but two and a half hours, I think, is the longest I've ever sat and picked a lock. Uh, this is going to be a, a really ridiculous answer. A master padlock, because I was stupid enough to take the bet that I could do it up, while well, upside down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's two, two parts to this. The longest I've spent trying to open a lock is three months, which was an Ingersoll 10 lever. Um, three months. Three months. Three months. Okay. Three, yeah, the longest, yeah. Um, the most expensive lock I've quick, uh, picked in the quickest time was someone asked me to open a uh, Bannum um, as a challenge and it took three seconds. That was a complete mistake, but it still opened and uh, anyone from London's probably seen them. They're the uh, dimple picks with the holes all the way through. They're not as safe as you think they are. Are we allowed to tell people about that now? Yeah. <laughs> um, this one was really difficult because I had no tools, but I've just done it on stage. No, so. it's not that difficult. <laughs> <laughs> with, with no tools. Without and, tools, okay. And that kind of wraps it up. You, you can yeah. watch the video. Um, <laughs> Thank you very much. I once spent oh, three and a half hours <laughs> on a safe, at a safe opening weekend. Literally, my arm was so tired that I got someone to get a piece of wood and put it under there so that I continue so I didn't drop the levers. Um, but I got it open in the end. It took an hour to get the broken key out first before I could even start. Um, then, of course, there's locks that you just fail to open, and that does occasionally happen. Anyway, Lockpick Village is over there. Thanks very much. Just, just out of the door, you're in the Lockpick Village. Come by there. See you there. Thanks for now.